Hello, friends and family. Today I want to talk about transitions. Hi, I'm Jen, and today and every day we talk about my quest to crush aggressive, diffuse, large B cell lymphoma, DLBCL, stage four. And we're using the REPOC immunotherapy chemotherapy to crush non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thank you so much for joining me on the journey today. So let's start with a quote, <laughs> and then we'll talk about what's in my noodle. Honor the space between no longer and not yet. Mm, I forgot to write down who the author is, but I'll make sure to include that on, on the screen here. So I was thinking about transitions today, a little bit, a little bit about everything. So I mentioned that I had a robocall. One of the things that we've struggled with, we as a team have struggled with, is the transition um, between student leadership. So for those who don't know, um, the robotics team is kind of co-led with mentors and students. And we have a student leadership structure, president, vice presidents, and so forth, managers and such. It's really like a small engineering firm. <laughs> and um, oftentimes our leadership is our seniors, and of course, when you get to this, this, this section of the senior year, you're ready to get out of there. You, you, you're done. A, you worked really hard as, as a leader on the team and B, you're a senior. So you're ready to move to the next stage. And we've had a difficult time over the years doing that transition. And we've been working pretty hard with this, the mentors and the students to put mechanisms in place to allow a better transition. So one of the things that happened was that they rather than wait until now to identify who the new leadership is going to be, we, we put in place a mechanism where we found out, I forget now if it's a month or two months ago, who was interested in becoming leaders. And those people have been shadowing the current leaders to kind of get the lay of the land and learn what's coming and so forth and so on. So they're at the point next week when somebody gets elected, um, they'll already have a little bit of experience There'll be a more formal transition, hopefully, but, you know, this is going on. So I was in a meeting today where there was a fairly significant discussion about their transition, about what to expect. Um, if you're next year's leader, this, this, and this is going to happen, and you got to do this, this, and this between the old leadership and the new leadership. And we were very happy to see that. That was great. But that got me to thinking about transitions. And then also... I, you know, I hesitate. I'm going to include it at the end of the video, but earlier this week or last week, I had a discussion about why am I not having a party or a celebration because I am done with chemo. And am I? That's the question. Am I done? And so I'm kind of in this odd spot in my mind. I can't really transition to, okay, you kicked it and you're ready to go. And I, I can't let go of the, it might not be gone, right? Because I'm just in this odd position. And it's kind of a long period of time, the six six to eight weeks, probably at least six weeks of, okay, you're done being formally treated right now, but you're not done fighting cancer because we're not really totally positive that the cancer's gone until we see that scan, right? So from a transition perspective, I'm, I'm not there, right? I'm struggling a little bit with that in-between space. So I thought that this was a good quote, honor the space between no longer and not yet. I'm kind of in a space in between. That's where I am right now. And so you've noticed, I assume, <laughs> that I'm trying to implement these new goals to change my daily life to, you know, regularly do a little bit of yoga, to get more water, to get more sleep, these things to help make this body stronger and, and um, healthier and fight back from all the poisoning. But, but at the same time, acknowledging, you know, I'm not preparing to run a marathon or anything incredible like that. And on the downside, if I'm not done, I've used this downtime to make this body stronger and be better able to fight whatever comes next. Now, my hope, my sincerest hope, is that there is no additional battle that has to be fought, that I've done the fighting, and when I'm done with this six or eight weeks and this effort to strengthen my body will just put me that much closer to my normal. And it won't be a new normal, it will be my normal. Um, that's my hope, but I have to be realistic and pragmatic as I'm apt to do <laughs> and say, you know, on the side of the case where I, um, 
still have a battle to be fought, at least I'm taking this time to make this body a stronger, um, stronger and more prepared for battle rather than just waiting around to see what the next steps are. And so that's what I'm doing. I don't think I'm going to push crazy aggressive. I'm thinking, you know, maybe next week of introducing a little bit more. I have like some jump rope, maybe a minute of jump rope or a minute of a hula hooping, which seems silly, but it's a little bit different kind of exercise, a little bit fun. It is high impact. So, you know, that's why I'm only saying maybe a minute a day, but we'll see. We'll see how I'm doing with the, my list. If I'm able to continue for the rest of this week and meet all my goals, then I would like to do a little bit of increase next week, but nothing super crazy, obviously. And again, my goals here I hit, are twofold. Because I'm in this in-between, I'm either getting stronger for the next battle or I'm getting stronger to go live my best life, right? But either way, I'd like to be stronger and um, maybe stronger is the wrong word. Um, healthier, stronger, healthier, more in tune. I'd like to make this body happy. Unfortunately, this body has not been happy for several months because we keep poisoning it <laughs> in the guise of medicine. <laughs> All right, so uh, I don't think I have anything else. What do you guys think about transitions? And this kind of odd space I'm in right now where I'm kind of done, but kind of not done. Kind of transitioning onto like living, but kind of not. So, and, and uh, some of this is metered, but you know, this Sunday I'm supposed to get my COVID shot. So purportedly two weeks post COVID shot, I could go do things in, in the world, but I'm still hesitant in that, on that front. Um, it's unclear to me how protected that, that shot really makes me. But maybe I can do some things. Maybe I just have to wear a mask and wash my hands and not touch my face and all those, all the regular guidelines. And I could go out and do things. But we will, we shall see. All right. So I am doing pretty well. I had a good day today. Surprisingly, today, if I was following my up and downs, today should have been in a down day, but it was pretty good. Uh, despite the fact that I had an incredibly long day, I had over four hours of meetings which typically wear me out. <laughs> but I, I think I held my own. I did pretty well. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Four hours of work meetings plus the robotics meeting after. So all told, uh, four or five, well, five and a half hours of meetings, which are challenging for me. But I did it. So I'm, I think, I don't know if my efforts to live a healthier um, stronger lifestyle are paying off or just every day I get farther away from the chemo is another day that I can sustain energy and everything else. I don't know, but I'm taking it. It's a gift and I'm grateful. Um, no angel deliveries that I'm aware of as far as, um, the doctor's news, no luck moving the COVID vaccine shot kept trying, but on side note, Bill is going tomorrow for his second shot. So he's going to get his second shot tomorrow. Fingers crossed for no nasty side effects. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's look at my to-do list. Today I worked. <laughs> I worked on my goals. I did pretty well. I've already done most of my yoga. I usually do the restorative poses at the end of the day before bedtime because they help me turn down. But I done, I've already done the sun salutations. Um, I had the robotics call. I put in a Costco order. I cleaned the Costco order. I left it to the boys to put the Costco order away. <laughs> Bob did bring the stuff in from outside, so that was good. Um, I did some more work in the pantry, cleared out a few more things and scanned a few things. And I did a little bit of charity miles for my lunch hour or half hour or whatever time I spent on that. Uh, speaking of charity miles, we have 19 folks on our team. We have collectively moved 2,391 miles. That is crazy, the amount of miles we've moved, guys. You're doing, you're killing it. And our team name is Team Crush NHL, exclamation point, exclamation point. And you are welcome to join us if you'd like. We'd love to have you. There's also a link down below in the description to join the team. All right, so we should talk about what I have to do tomorrow. To do. My to-do tomorrow is work, work on my goals, 
uh, have a robotics call. I actually have two robotics calls and I have an important email that I have to send out. So those, that's my list of must do's for tomorrow. And I would love to do remain the same. I would love to crochet. I would love to pur purchase my studio um, items and I'd like to do research on the SEO tool. But not sure any of that's going to happen tomorrow. Two robotics calls plus a full day of work. That stuff might not happen to the weekend. Oh, in case anyone's interested, here's my um, healing arm. <laughs> not sure that you were interested, but there you go. Uh, no, no real pain or any issues with it. Just, just sharing. All right, so that was my ta-da and my to-do. So if you're just here for story time, thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you tomorrow. All right, let's get into it. Remember, every day is a gift. Live it. We'll see you tomorrow.